Okay. Let me get this over here. Well, but come we have Aleph Gimel. Aleph Gimel, but okay. I mean, we do also have Aleph Gimel, but uh, but let's start with Aleph Gimel. You want to do Aleph Gimel? Okay, I have Aleph Gimel. Why don't I have Aleph? Yeah, sorry, we we'll we'll do Aleph Gimel later, but that's uh, that's okay. enough as ours. Aleph Gimel. Aleph Gimel. What am I doing over here? What happened over here? That's right. It's it's right to have Aleph Gimel because that's the next round of Chazaris. That's a week ago. Right. Right. So. So why can't I find Dalit Gimel? Where is it? Dalit Gimel. Okay, here we go. Oh, because I know why, because I put the tissue in that place, because I thought we were signing. Okay, I got it. Here's the tissue right here. Okay. If a bull of a Jew gores a bull consecrated to the temple, or if a bull consecrated to the temple gores a bull of a Jew, its owner is exempt. As it is said, another's bull, but not a bull consecrated to the temple. If a bull of a Jew gores a bull of a Gentile, the Jew is exempt. But if a bull of a Gentile goes a bull of a Jew, whether it be a, a Tom or a Muad, the G Gentile pays the full damages. If the bull so this, of a... So, this, so just to, to clarify this one, um, it's, this is, um, this, we, we saw this uh, when, we, when we actually just started the Masefta. Uh, it was because they were being, because the in that time, the, the non-Jews who were living among the Jews were not being uh, we're, we're not guarding their property correct, uh, correctly. They weren't guarding their animals uh, correctly, and so the courts punished them by making them hire full nezek on a uh, oh, even on a tam, right? And uh, by exempting the Jews if they, if a Jewish animal uh, um, damaged a non a non Jews animal. Um, but there's a comment over here that um, uh, the Meiri says that uh, since uh, this is only because of the of the reasoning that there was in the time. But when you have a, but when you have uh, you know non-Jews who are keeping the sheva mitzvahs correctly and they're being and they're being marked and looking at everything, then we don't discriminate against them. It was only this was only against the the non-Jews of that time who were not observing their mitzvahs properly and weren't guarding their property property correctly, and therefore there was a knas on them. Okay, all right. If the bull of a person of sound mind gores the bull of a deaf mute. A mentally deranged person or a minor, its owner is liable. But if the bull of a deaf mute or a mentally deranged person or a minor causes the bull of a person of sound mind, its owner is exempt. If the bull of a deaf mute, a mentally deranged person or a minor gores, uh, gores the uh, court appoints for them an administrator and they forewarn them in the presence of the administrator. If the deaf mute, deaf mute gains his senses, the mentally deranged person becomes sane or the, mirror, uh, or the minor becomes of age. The bull reverts to a status of a tam, and this is Reb Meir's view. And Reb Yossi says it remains in its present state. Just to, before before you carry on, just think about this for a second. If you have, a, if, if they put an apotropos, which is a um, a guardian, a custodian, um, in, in place of, the, uh, and they warn the bull in front of them. Now let's say the bull goes off and causes damages. Who's liable for the damages? Right. Well, it, it can't yeah, be. The, the fair shot of a cotton can't be liable. Right. They're, they're not. Uh, so, so who's going to pay the damages? You've only got one option over here, and that's the apotropos. So what? Oh, he has to pay. So he, he, has to pay the he, actually, he actually becomes liable. So like, why is that, why is somebody going to agree to be an apotropos? Is is a is a good question over here. Who's going to? Um, who, who's so maybe it might be that he has to that he takes a payment for his services at, for for being an apotropos. Okay, so there's something in it for him, or else uh, he has the right to claim it from the, you know, from the fair shot of the cotton, or particularly for a cotton when he grows up, but he can claim it from the cotton when he grows up, um, or if the if the fair shot of the shot here, um, you know, to revert to being of sound mind, um, but otherwise it's difficult to understand why anyone would agree to be an upper choppers. Ah. Um, Okay, so carry, so carry on with the. So if he wasn't if he wasn't being paid for doing this job, then he takes his money comes out of his out of his own pocket. Yeah, that's going to right? have to come out of his own pocket. Like so, he, so, so there's actually a machlokis amorayim in the Gemara, whether the upper choppers pay, pays from his own property, uh, and then comes back and claims from the katanim when they get older, or if he just pays from the property of the katanim. That's another possibility. Uh -huh. <coughs> A bull from the arena is not liable to death, as it is said, if a bull gores, but not that it should be made to gore. Right. So it's not so. So when a bull has been trained to be vicious, 
you know, in the, in the stadium, then it actually is not high of for killing somebody because it's only key gach. It's only when, when a regular bull kills something. But if, if, it's a, if it's a trained arena bull, interestingly, it becomes patter, not because, because the people made it sick, uh, sick on, the, on the other people, effectively. Did you ever see a bullfight? Never, and I never want to. Well, when we were in Spain, this was like over 50 years ago, we went to a bullfight, and, and, and after about three or four rounds, you know, we said, all right, let's get out of here now. You know, like, it was really gross. It was just... I don't, I don't need to go through three or four rounds to know that it's going to be really gross. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, we were screaming and carrying on. They were like, you know, we got out of there. So just, <laughs> if a bull gores a man and he dies, if the bull is a muad, its owner pays ransom. If a tom, he is exempt from ransom. It, but both are liable to death. The same applies to a male child, and the same applies to a female child. If it gores a male slave or a female slave, the, its owner pays 37, whether it was worth a mana or whether it was worth a, no more than a, a dinner. A dinner, right. Okay. okay. All right. Um, so that's a, that, so that's because the the ebit is a, is an amount that's specified specifically in the Torah thirty that is thirty shekels. Right. Okay. Sure, shehayan mishakef ukasa. So so an ox comes and it's itchy and it rubs itself up against the wall and the wall falls over. Then up on an adam and it falls on a person. Niskavin la oh so this is an unintentional killing. Or, or, so the bull is charging another bull, and the other bull moves out the way, and the and, and the animal winds up killing a person. Right. Okay. The nochri, or the the bull was charging a non-Jew, and uh, and the Jew jumped in front of it, or uh, and saved and saved the non-Jew at the cost of his own life. The harik ben Yisrael. The nefalim. If the if the um, if the um, so, so, so if if a if a if a baby was was born um, and it was clearly not going to live very long, because mm. um, but it, but it was still nonetheless somewhat alive and the bull was charging it, and instead it, uh, instead of uh, of killing the baby, it killed a it killed a you know, a viable person, whether it's a baby or or an adult doesn't matter. In all these cases, it's fatter because the the bull was aiming to kill somebody who or something or wasn't even aiming to kill um some that they, they, they wouldn't have been fired for so an accident uh, happened so basically an accident happened and and it was it unintentionally killed a killed a person that would be liable for, for being killed in all these cases <laughs> okay nonetheless um if, if there's still uh uh this there's still if there's a the, the owner has to pay a call fare Right, the coffee being the atonement you know, that he has to pay to the uh, to the to the family of the deceased, um, because even if the bull wasn't intentional, nonetheless the, the damage is still assessed on him. This is learned from the pasuk in kofe yushas alav. Uh, it should have just said kofe yushas alav. in kofe. So what's the word im? Why has it got an extra im? In order to uh, in order to include the the shore that kills uh, unintentionally, that he still he's nonetheless still uh, high the kofe. Um, Mishnah Zayin, Shor Ha'isha, the woman owns a bull, Shor Ha'isomim, or orphans own the bull, Shor Ha'achachopos, or it belongs to a, gu a custodian, guardian, Shor Midbar, uh, a wild Shor, Shor Ha'hekdesh, or it a, it's a, belongs to Hekdesh, Shor Ha'ger Shem Meisu En Lo or if it belonged to a Ger who died without, uh, without heirs, Re'elu Chayevim Misa. Nonetheless, all of these, um, if they killed, they still have to. They still have to be put to death, even though there's nobody to pay any coffee or anything like that. Nonetheless, if the if the bull, bull killed, it nonetheless has to be put to death. But Behuda disagrees. He says, "Shor um, Hamidbar, the the wild the wild ox, Shor Hekdesh, or one that belongs to the temple, Shor Hager or um, of a boy uh, of a ger who died without without um, without Yorshin. So basically." It's a shore of Hefker. It doesn't belong to any, to a Jew. But Tur Minamisa Lefisha in the It has no owner, and therefore there is no there's no death penalty for the shore. That's the opinion of Rabbi Huda. However, the halacha follows the Tanakhama that no matter who the owner is, it's 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 a uh, it's a din on the bull itself, and uh, if it kills, it needs to be put to death. Yeah. 
Mishnechest, Shor Shu Yotze Lehisakel. By the way, this, um, the, the, I think the Mothmokis even applies, right? Rabbi Yehuda also um, applies it if it killed while it was in the possession of somebody, and then before it could come to judgment, the owner was mafkirit, or he donated it to the temple, or the gear died. Um, in, even in those cases, Rabbi Yehuda would say that the that, that at the time of judgment, it has no owners, and therefore it's part of it. Anyway, okay. that's not like it. Okay, so an, uh, so an ox has been has been sentenced to death, and it's being taken out to to be stoned. The hikdish or balav, and the other owner comes and says, uh, "Hooray, this uh, this this shore is is hikdish." Okay, ain't no He can't do that because he has no more rishus over this animal. It's it's been taken out to be killed. Now it's basically not his animal okay. anymore. So he, so you can't be much to something that's not yours. Right. Okay, so that doesn't work. Shrato. Now what happens is he, he he sees the animal coming out and he says, oh, let me let me save the say, say at least we can have some meat out of it. So he runs up with a shita knife and shechts this bull to completely kosher. The saro aso. Asu to eat this animal. Why? The the, the lambdas of this is that it comes from the passage, Sakoli Sakel Hashor, the law ye achel es besaro. It must be stoned and you can and you cannot eat its flesh. Now if so you ask yourself, if the animal has to be stoned, why do I have to be told that I can't eat its flesh? It's an avela, right? right? You kill an animal with with stones, it's an avela. Why, why would the pastor have to tell me this? LMI, it must be coming to tell us that the, exactly this case, that if the somebody jumped in and, and shefted the ox kosher before it could be stoned, nonetheless, it's still got an isra hanar, and it may not be eaten. Okay, you with me? I'm just looking at this last sentence that says, if before its sentence was passed, its owner consecrated it. it oh, no, we haven't got there yet. I'm about, right. I'm about to read that now. Okay. So now the owner knows what's coming. He saw his ox kill somebody and he knows what's coming. So he says, okay, Arezo Hektesh. At least let me get the source of, of giving this animal to the temple and then it'll be Pato from, uh, from Skila. And the, the basin comes and says, let's judge this animal. He says, no, 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 it's hectish. And they look at him and raise an eyebrow and they say, mm -mm, redeem it. We want you to redeem it. And they, they, they pass it on him. He has to redeem it. So he has to put in money plus a homish to redeem it into the, into the temple right. treasury. Now the ox is back into his possession again and they can judge it and take it to be stoned. Okay. But in it and, and stone it now. They can, yeah, they, can, they can stone it again because it committed the offense while it was in his, in his, it, it, while it was in his possession, and they ju judged it while it was in his possession. So the fact that it was hectic in between is kind of immaterial. Uh -huh. That's and that, that's what basically what they what they force him to do. That's not written explicitly in the Mishnah. That's uh, I just gave you in between the lines over there that this is what they will do to him. Um, it, it says in the last sentence that if he slaughtered it, then the flesh is permissible. Right. If he slaughtered it, however, that's so that's a much better answer for him. Rather than being Maktish to the to the Mikdash, he, can, he he knows what's coming and he kind of <laughs> checks the animal and says, see, I did the, the work of the court for you. And I got rid of this, I got rid of this ox. And they look and they shrug and say, okay, well, what can we do? Animal's dead, nothing to do here. And uh, and the and the meat is kosher. Okay. Okay. Um, interesting question. Uh, interesting question. If uh, uh, he probably shouldn't do that because you know it's got a din, it's got to come to din. And that khatila, obviously, you should allow the, the halakha to take its course. Um, but but this guy jumped in, he did the wrong thing, he shafted it before it could come to din. But uh, and mala uh, it's, it's what's done is done, they can't bring it back to life in order to in order to kill it. So okay. Um Aleph Gimel? Right, now we can do Aleph Gimel. Okay. Um, the valuation is in money, and the payment is made with money's worth in the presence of a court and by the testimony of witnesses who are free men and Jews. Women are governed by a law of damages, and the damagee and the damager are included in the payment. There are five that are Taman and five that are Mu'adin. An animal is not Mu'ad either to gore, nor to push, nor to bite, nor to lie down, nor to, to, to kick. Shane is Mu'ad to eat what is fit for it, Regal is muad to break as it walks, and the muad bull, the bull that damages while on the premises of the damagee, and man. The wolf, the lion, the bear, the leopard, the bardalis, and the snake are muadin. 
Reb Eliezer says, when they are des- domesticated, they are not muadin, but the snake is always muad. What is the difference between a tom and a muad? Only that the owner of the tom pays half the damages from its body, and the owner of the muad pays the full damages from the best of the property. And what do they, they, do they by the way, do they give any translation of what's a bardalas in Oscar? I'm sorry, did they give a translation of what's bardalas? The number is a leopard, and then what's bardalas? Um the wolf the wolf. Uh Bardala. Bardala. Um I don't see it right off the top here. Bardala. Um no, you don't have anything either, I guess. And Nothing in that's what the translation is of Bardalas. Okay. Um, no. Oh, wait. Concerning Bardala, however, there is much controversy and conjecture. Rashi and the Behagola identified as a skunk. Tosfos takes exception to Rashi's definition, since Bardalas is listed among animals that are much fiercer than the skunk and which customarily kill people. Rather, they conjecture that as a species of the snake. Uh, Arik renders it as a leopardess, which is even more ferocious than its male compound part, and other commentaries um, and define it as a cheetah and some of the hy- and some as the hyena. Okay, so I'll tell you for sure that it's not a cheetah. <laughs> uh, from, from personal experience, Cheetahs are uh, cheetahs are like uh, almost never harm people. Really? Yeah. I've got uh, when I was in South Africa. Now um, we went to one of these little game parks, and they actually went for for extra payment. You could go into the cheetah enclosure and actually pet the cheetahs. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, we were, we were brave to uh, do that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, oh, gorgeous, beautiful. Was the, was the family with you when you paid the money to go in there? Was the <laughs> My kids did it too. They did. Yeah. You sent them in first, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I did, but uh, it wasn't for that reason. <laughs> uh, okay. Let me see. We um, oh, we have okay. Uh, base Aleph. In what way is Rebbe? Oh, base Aleph. Yes, that's right. So we haven't done but base Aleph yet. You're in right. what way is Rebbe considered muad to break as it walks? The animal was muad to walk in its usual manner and break. If it was kicking or pebbles were flying from under its feet and it broke vessels, it pays half the damages. If it stepped on a vessel and broke it and it fell on a vessel and broke it, for the first one, he pays the full damages and for the second one, he pays half the damages. Fowl are considered muad to walk in their usual manner and break. If a thread was tied to its feet or if it was jumping and it broke vessels, he pays half the damages. Okay. That's it. All right. I wish this would stop. Hey. Listen. Okay. Uh, hey, hey. Rabbi Yochanan ben Good Gid. I can never get this name. Good Gida testified that a deaf mute girl whose father married her off can be divorced with a get. And that a minor, the daughter of a non Kohen who was married to a Kohen, may eat truma. And if she dies, her husband inherits her. And that for a stolen beam, uh, which was built into a large building, he shall take its value for the sake of penitence, and that a stolen sin offering whose statue, status was not known to the public atones for the sake of the altar. There, were, there was no extortionist of, of land in Judah in the time of those slain at war. From the time of the slain at war and onward, there were extortionists there. How? If one bought from the extortionist and then bought from the owner, the purchase is void. From the owner and then from the extortionist, his purchase is valid. If he bought from the husband and then bought from his wife, his purchase is void. For the wife and then from the husband, his purchase is valid. That is the original offering. The court came. The court that came after them said, one who buys from an extortionist gives the owner one fourth. When is this? When they do not have what, it, what with what to buy. But if they have with what to buy, they take precedence over any person. Rebbe convened the court and they voted and enacted that if it remained with the extortionist 12 months, whoever is first to acquire, buy it acquires it and it gives the owner one fourth. A deaf mute gestures and is gestured uh, too. Ben, Be- ben Becerra, uh, however, says he moves his lips and is communicated with by means of lift movements. In transactions involving chattels, young uh, chattels, young children's purchases are purchases and their sales are sales and transactions involving chattels. Okay. 
All right, let me see. We yeah, are Subos. 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 The Subos. We have uh, Yir Aleph. Yir Aleph base. Gimel. Gimel. If she sold the ketubah or part of it, or if she pledged her ketubah or part of it, or if she gave her ketubah uh, or part of it as a gift to another person, she may not sell the rest except with the sanction of a court. The sages, however, say that she may that she may sell even four or five times. I mean, she sell it for sustenance without the sanction of a court, but she should write, I sold for sustenance. Or a divorcee may not sell except with the sanction of a court. A widow who ketubah was 200 zoos and who sold property worth 100 for 200 or property worth 200 for 100, I received her ketubah. If her ketubah was 100 and she sold it worth 100 and a dinner for 100, her sale is void. Even if she says, I will return a dinner to the heirs, her sale is void. Rabbi Shimon Ben Amil says her sale is always valid unless there would be enough for her to leave over. In a field, an area of nine kavan, in a garden, an area of half a kav, and according to Rabbi Akiva's view, an area of a quarter of a kav. If her ketubah was 400 zoots, and she sold this one for 100, and did this one for 100, and the last one property worth 100, and a dinner for 100, the sale of the last one is void, but the sale of all the others are valid. The appraisal of the judges who undervaluated the property by a six or un undervaluated by a six, uh, their sale is invalid. Then Shimon Ben Gamil says their sale is valid. Otherwise, the, what value has the power of the court? If they drew up a deed of inspection, even if they sold property worth 100 Jews for 200 or property worth 200 for 100, their sale is valid. Okay. Bum, 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 bum. Irvin. Okay, Vav Zion. Brothers or partners who eat at their father's table, but who sleep in their own homes, need an Arab for each one. Therefore, if one of them forgot to contribute to the Arab, he must nullify his rights. When is this so? When they bring the Arab to another place, but if the Arab was brought to them, or they are no other residents in the courtyard, they need not contribute to the Arab. Five courtyards, which open, in, uh, open into the other and, and into a valley, if they made an error in the courtyards but did not make a shistuv in the valley and the alley, they are permitted in the courtyards but prohibited in the valley, in the alley. If they make a shistuv in the alley, they are permitted here and there. If they made an error for the courtyards and a shistuv for the valley and one of the residents of the courtyard forgot to contribute to the error, they are permitted here and there. If one of the residents of the alley did not participate in the shistuv, they are permitted in the courtyards but are prohibited in the alley. For an alley is to the courtyards as a courtyard is to the houses. Two courtyards, one behind the other. If the owner made an error, but the outer did not, the inner is permitted while the outer is prohibited. The outer, but did not the inner. Both are prohibited. Each courtyard made its own error, then each is individually permitted. Rabbi Akiva prohibits the outer because the right of passage restricts it, but the sages say the right of passage is not restricted. Thanks. Okay. Boss. Um, okay, Tess Zion. And on the apron of pitch workers or potters or of tree pruners, it does not intervene. Rabbi Yehuda says the same applies to the apron of fruit dryers. This is the general rule. Anything which one finds disturbing intervenes, and anything which one does not find disturbing does not intervene. All handles of utensils that were in inserted improperly or they were inserted properly but were not finished or they were finished but not be and, but became broken, they, these intervene. If a vessel was immersed in its mouth downwards, it is as though it was not immersed. If it was immersed the normal way but without its appendage, it does not become tahor unless it is turned on its side. A vessel which is now at both ends and wide in its middle cannot become tahor unless it is turned on its side. A bottle whose rim is turned downward cannot become tahor unless it is pierced on its side. And the layman's inkwell cannot become tahor unless it is pierced on its side. And you'll see how Cohen's inkwell was pierced on its side. The mattress, a mattress or cushion of leather requires that the water should enter into, the, into them. But as round pillow, a ball, a stuff form, an amulet, or a tefillah does not require that the water should enter into it. This is a general rule that anything whose contents are not usually put in and taken out may be immersed and unopened. Um, let me just see. There's one thing I have comment, but um, okay, well, I have it. I have it. 
All right, we are in Kulin. Kulin, Vav, Cheswell. There's a stringency in Caleb over blood, and there's a stringency in blood over Caleb. The stringency in Caleb is that one is guilty of Meila on its account, and one is liable on its account for Pigal, leftover, and, and Tuma, which is not the case with blood. That stringency of blood is that the prohibition of blood applies to domestic animals, beasts, and fowl, not both non kosher and kosher, whereas the prohibition of Caleb applies only to kosher domesticated animals. The hide, the gravy, the spices, the shreds, the bones, the gidden, the horns, and the hooves combined to convey the tumor of foods, but not the tumor of an avalos. Similarly, if one slaughters a non kosher animal for a Gentile and it still convulses, it conveys the tumor of food, but not the tumor of the velus until it dies or until he chops off its head. Scripture has provided for more things that convey tumor of foods that they, that then that convey tumor of the velus. Reb Yehuda says shreds that were gathered together if they were the volume of an olive in one place, one is liable on its account. The skins of the following are like their flesh, the skins of a man, the skin of a domestic pig. Reb Yoshi says also the skin of a wild pig and the skin of the hump of a tender camel. The head, the skin of the head of a young calf, the skin of the hooves, the skin of the uh, pudenda, the skin of a fetus, the skin under the fat tail, and the skin of a hedgehog, the chameleon, the lizard, and the snail. The Yehuda says the lizard is like the weasel, but any of them that were tanned or trodden, as long as he re as required for tanning, is a tahor, except for the skin of a man. The Yochanan ben Nori says the eight shratzim have skins. Okay. okay. Uh, no. All right. Tomorrow we're back to our regular time, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll, still... I can get here. I'll no. try to get here on time. We're going to be after. It's still going to be after the second minion, I think. Um, uh, okay, so we'll go for the after the second minion. Yeah. You'll just text me or call me yeah. better than texting. Okay. Okay. Well, thank. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.